Did you see what Bray Wyatt did recently? He did a tweet. <laughs> that I've said that out loud. It doesn't sound very exciting, but bear with me. Now, I'm not going to read the whole thing to you because it's quite long, but hopefully it will be on the screen now. Maybe it's even covering my face and you can lean in and read the words. But my gosh, he was making references to everything. He was talking about Ring of Honor. He was talking about All Elite Wrestling. He was talking about The Undertaker. He was talking about Kane. He was talking about giving people the rock bottom. And the sentiment seemed to me, don't worry, even though I'm not in wrestling right now, I love this business and soon I shall be traveling back into it. I mean, the first line was how wrestling isn't a love story. And I was like, oh my gosh, he could feud with Cody Rhodes because Mr. Code said something differently. So I stood there, I thought about it, I let my brain whir. And I was like, you know what? Bray should go back to WWE. And here's how. Now sure, people like to read through every single word when it does come to things like this. And at one point he even said, there's honor among the elite. So if you just want to take that as a cut and dry piece of evidence, you'll go, oh, he's going to real honor or he's going to AEW. But I would say that's a red herring. And given how the wrestling world has changed recently, I actually think returning to world wrestling entertainment would be for the best. Now I do want to make it clear that wherever the real life Wyndham Rotunda does turn up is perfectly cool with me because do not forget he is a human being and he deserves to be happy. But really it's when you break everything down that all of a sudden you start to go, oh yeah, maybe that would be a good idea. Because when it comes to All Elite Wrestling, they have made it quite clear they're happy to deal with the spooky wookie. I mean, you cannot look at a group like the House of Black and go, oh well, they're a really serious presentation. Like they have an edge, but you ain't gonna walk out your door and see three dudes walk around and go, oh man, like, pfft, and spit mist in your face. So I would probably define them as a little screwed up, but when you do drop across to WWE, they go full on nuts with this stuff. I mean, we have actually seen people been killed, buried in the ground, and then descend up into the sky as if they're having some kind of rebirth. Now, I've always been a huge fan of this because I think when you are dealing with something that is creative, it should be gloves off. And if you want to run wild, then you run into those heels. But there's something else here that is a little bit boring. And I am, of course, talking about licensed property. Now, all of a sudden you'll be going, oh man, Simon, I don't want to get into that. It sounds super duper dull. But look, we're about to create Back to the Future 4 here. So bear with me. Now, I don't think it matters when or where because it's about the impact. And that sounds like I'm doing a tease, but I'm absolutely not. But at some point on a Raw or a SmackDown, you start getting those weird glitches that you used to get when Bray Wyatt was around before. You remember, they always used to end with that check noise. I still don't know what that was meant to be. I want these to be super subtle though, to the point you kind of acknowledge it, but you're like, wait, did I? See something or did I make that up in my skull? And you keep doing this and doing this until nerds like you and I are ready to explode. Then they just stop. And I am talking about a good chunk of time passes. And maybe the commentators can be like, oh man, do you remember when all that weird stuff was happening? Why did it stop? Nobody knows. But then nobody is allowed to mention it. You can't even have a wink, wink, nudge, nudge. You then go back to trying to turn wrestling into sports entertainment. And just as it has left everybody's mind, you can pick the show. It can be Monday, Friday. I don't care. But you have the lights off gimmick. Everyone's like, what the hell is going on? And when the lights return, who is sat in the middle of the ring with his Hawaiian shirt and in his rocking chair? That's right, my friends. I am talking about the original Eater of Worlds. He then laughs and poof, he's gone again. And in my household, I will fall on the floor and just start going absolutely ridiculous because this is the kind of thing that I want in my life. And it's very, very important that we do go back to Bray Wyatt round one because as much as I like The Fiend, do not forget, the only reason we had to create that to begin with is because we had Bray Wyatt, Bray Wyatt was great, and we booked him into the floor. That is then though, and this is now, and of course we do have a new regime, so if you want to rebuild the Wyatt family, why the flub not? If you go onto social media right now, Eric Rowan seems to be in complete tease mode. So of course you can have that and he was in the first one too. But then you have Dominic Dijakovic, who also is apparently about to have a brand new character. Now those two dudes are absolutely massive. And I actually think you probably should do something where you're like, oh man, Luke Harper, you were the best. 
but you have these three and then just have them take over all of world wrestling entertainment. No more nonsense, no more mucking around. They are scary and everyone is scared of them and they get into matches and they win. Now obviously it's not gonna be as original as it was, but never forget why it went awry in the first place. Let's take a walk down memory lane. Bray Wyatt, Randy Orton feud. Bray Wyatt lost. Chris Jericho feud. Bray Wyatt lost. The Undertaker feud. Bray Wyatt lost. The Seth Rollins feud. Bray Wyatt lost. And we had everything with Goldberg. Now, I know he was the fiend by then, but it just tied into how the promotion saw Mr. Wyatt. They just thought he could be like, oh man, I'm a magic man, and that was enough. It was incorrect. I mean, even when he teamed up with Matt Hardy, he lost to the B team, and nobody lost to the B team. And given that we have brought The Fiend into this conversation, I totally get it. A lot of you are going, oh, but Simon, if he does come back, I need The Fiend too. Well, you can do that as well. When Bray Wyatt does get into a program, and all of a sudden he's struggling, because the other guy is better than him, he can go through that transformation and he can become the fiend. Now, you're probably thinking about Finn Balor and the demon persona. No, none of that. Go and watch how Balor did it in New Japan. This is what I'm talking about. When you get all heebie-jeebie, because you're like, wait a minute, this dude is crazy. You could even do it so that when you do need to beat Wyatt, that's when he becomes this character and he goes back to being indestructible. Because do not forget, you cannot have someone who is unbeatable from January all the way through to December. Otherwise, you get debacles like Hell in a Cell 2019, and it's been almost three years and I ain't over it. But you can change, you can evolve, and after you've established it, you can just turn it down a little bit. Picture this too, and I doubt we would wait this long, but Cody Rhodes returns to the WWE in time for the Raw Rumble. He wins the damn thing, he goes on to WrestleMania, he wins the WWE Championship, and the next night on Raw, everything I've talked about happens. Bray Wyatt does return, and he goes after Cody. Do you not want to see that? I'm going to act like you do. I mean, if Wyatt is presented in the right way, you've got Rhodes, who is the quintessential babyface, and now he's got to take on this absolute psychopath. And sure, you can do this in AEW as well, and I would enjoy this just as much, but you're gonna have to call him, like, Dave Myatt. Dave Myatt doesn't have the same ring to it. Also, you're gonna be copying a character and then trying to present it in another promotion, and while that has worked before, I just don't think it's gonna work here. Now, of course, no one actually knows what's going to happen, but given that Triple H currently is on a rehiring spree, I mean, Dexter Loomis is back, Karen Cross is back, Scarlett is back, Johnny Gargano is about to be back, when you've got a player out there as big as Wyatt, I don't think you leave him on the sidelines. I think you get your fishing rod and you try and reel him in. Don't come at me either with all this, oh, but Paul Levesque doesn't like that kind of stuff. Triple H, basically for his entire career, was side by side with The Undertaker. And given that he is now in control, do you not think he wants his own version of the dead man? Any person would. He's right there. He's waiting, believe you me. If we reset it properly, Wyatt can do it. So basically that kind of thing is like ice cream. Everybody wants to take a lick. So let's go and lick Bray Wyatt. <sighs> I bet you didn't think the video was gonna end like that. Now, seriously, please leave a comment below. Maybe you have a better idea about how to bring Bray Wyatt back to WWE or debut him in AEW. Get in those comments and let me know. Also like the video, share the video and subscribe. Head over to worldculture.com where we'll keep you up to date with everything Bray Wyatt on the website. Come follow us on social media. We have a lot of videos, a lot of them with my bald face. I'm sorry, watch it anyway. My name is Simon Watt Culture. Thank you very much for watching as always. Goodbye.